Sophia Research Group recently released the FRG microgrants, and we awarded a total of four microgrants for 2020 to universities in New Zealand and Australia. Today, we will hear about one of the proposals which was awarded, namely the one called Evacuee Tracking Using Kinect, which went to Massey University. And this project is led by Reno and Zenan at Massey University. Reno is the researcher who will tell us a bit more about this exciting proposal. Reno is senior lecturer at the School of Built Environment at Massey University. He is also the leader of the School of Built Environment Digital Lab, also at Massey University. Reno's research interests include human behavior and disasters, which include fire emergencies, but he's also interested in digital tools. So he uses BIM, VR and AR and 3D scanning. So Reno, could you please tell us a bit more about your exciting project? Hello, Daniel. Thank you for the nice introduction. And uh, in those few minutes, I'm gonna try to do my best to introduce uh, uh, the idea that you are uh, gonna fund with this uh, micro grant from FRG. Basically, a bit of uh, uh, explanation about why we we need this research. As you might know, uh, one of the main uh, topic that I've been working on in my career is about evacuation investigation. I've been uh, struggling quite a lot and try to put a lot of efforts to understand how people behave. And we have been doing this kind of work for years using real fires, so investigation of real accident, and using evacuation drills. For instance, here in New Zealand, we have done a lot of uh, analysis of evacuation drills in hospital, libraries, and uh, many office buildings. And we do this, ex we do those, those kind of exercise and those kind of uh, investigation, not just for the fun of writing scientific articles that get read by only by academics around the world. But those information that we extract from this investigation are crucial also to define codes like the existing verification code here in New Zealand, or also to write handbooks that are key uh, guidelines and a reference point for many practitioners. And those are really important information that help us in the real world, in the real world to understand how much we have how long it will take to evacuate a building. And so to run the so-called performance-based design approach to make assessment of the safety of a building. Now, what we have been doing in the last uh, decades is to use video recorded either through camera that we put there before an evacuation drills or CCTV camera that were already in place in those buildings and try to go back and forward to analyze the videos and try to extract a lot of information. So let's have a look about which kind of information we try to get out of those uh, videos. First of all, we try to investigate pre-evacuation times. So we try to understand how long it will take for a person. In this case, how long actually takes for a person to uh, start evacuating after the alarms goes off. We have been capable to do a lot of investigation about how people navigating those buildings and decide where to go consider that most of those buildings have multiple exits. So we have the possibility to see if they use the closest exit or if they go, for instance, to the most familiar exit that is, can be, for instance, the, uh, the entrance of a building. But we have been also be capable to extract information about speeds of uh, people. And this has been possible just uh, uh, taking reference point in those videos in different and uh, measuring the time required to cross those reference points. And uh, so knowing the distance and knowing the time necessary to speed, uh, to walk through those two reference points, we will be, we are being capable to uh, extract a lot of uh, speed information, but also fundamental diagrams. And those are the trickiest one to extract. Let's go and have a look in details what these are fundamental diagrams. Basically, those diagrams are relationship between speed and density. And if we see, for instance, the first diagram, we can see that the speed of people is going to decrease with the increments of density. That means that the situation, when the situation gets crowded, you won't have any longer the possibility to, to walk and evacuate with your full 
normal speed. So that's why people start to slow down. And we observe also impact of those uh, impact of those uh, of, of density also on the flow, as you can see in the second chart. And when we try to collect this data, it's crucial to collect from one side the speed a person is capable to move between reference point, and but it's also necessary to identify what was the density a person was walking uh, into. So in this case, we have a lot of easy work to do when we use a traditional method like video analysis to extract data when the density is not that high because we don't have many people that obstruct our reference point. We don't have uh, uh, a lot to struggle to uh, count or many people are in the area that is under investigation. But it became really, really challenging when we have a lot of people in the scene and we try to extract those information with a single camera or even sometimes with multiple cameras facing the same points. So I've been asking myself, is there any way that can, is any solution, is it technology that can be used to simplify our work and speed up? Because this process of extracting data about flow, or speed and density is quite time consuming. It's probably the most, one of the most crucial parts in the data analysis. And uh, I've been really happy to discover the capability of the new uh, Microsoft Kinect that you can see here in the picture. I have an example of those devices right here with me. It's basically a really small device. It's almost as big as a webcam and it can be installed in really different parts like a, a, a normal camera. And the cool feature of this device is, cap is its capability to extract information about humans' uh, position and uh, motion. So it's capable to detect human and track their, their body. So I've been, I've been thinking that that could be a really awesome possibility for us using this uh, grant to uh, gather data from those Kinect device, analyze those data inside the uh, computers. Uh, generally, we won't need a really high spec computer and eventually be capable uh, to extract uh, in, automatic, in automated way uh, fundamental diagrams out of the scene that is uh, uh, under investigation. So I need to say, a big, big thanks to those guys that you can see here in the slide, include you, Daniel, for giving us the opportunity to play with this new technology and investigate how much deeper we can go, how much we can uh, do with the, uh, those Kinects and their sensors. Most of the research is gonna be done in our lab at Mass University in the digital lab to develop the piece of code that is gonna automate the process of uh, analyzing data and uh, developing in automated way fundamental diagrams. Then we are gonna do a bit of verification and validation to see if the code is actually working and see if we need to do any kind of improvement in our code to make it more performing or fix a couple of bugs. And our final goal for this project is to start implementing this technology in the fields and we hope after the COVID to have a lot of chance here in New Zealand to test the capability of this new technology. So I would like to thank you from my side and my colleague Zenan for give us this fantastic opportunity through your uh, micro guns. So thank you a lot for research group and uh, I will talk to you fairly soon with the results of this awesome research and hopefully with a lot of cool uh, results to show you. Thank you so much and bye.